Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77 and the movie I'm reviewing today is a 1982 classic from the late great Larry Cohen. We're talking about Q the Wing Serpent. Q I believe stands for, I'm totally going to butcher this guys, you know, just be ready. I know it's, it stands for Quetzalcoatl. I think it's, I know I screwed that up. But anyway, so this movie has a little bit of an interesting history. See, what ended up happening was that at one point, Richard Round or not Richard Roundtree, Larry Cohen was in New York and he was hired to direct a movie version of the uh, Mickey Spillane book, Eye of the Jury. Well, that didn't pan out and Larry Cohen got fired from the job and he decided he was already there and, you know, he had paid for his hotel room and everything else. So why not scrape up together some money and just make his own movie? And so he had, you know, he had written, produced and directed this movie here, which is basically a throwback to, you know, classic monster movies of the 50s. But being the 1980s, it was a little bit more updated for the time. And I got to be honest, this movie is so much fun to watch. It's, you know, um, I admit I admit there are a couple of Larry Cohen movies I didn't think were all that great, like special effects. But, you know, a lot of the times. You know, Larry Cohen movies are always so much fun to watch, and Q the Wing Serpent is definitely no exception. So our story starts out in New York City, of course, and we, you know, in a quick flash, we see a window washer get beheaded. Turns out that the the winged serpent flies by, bites the guy's head off, and, you know, then we're introduced to our two main characters, uh, Detective Shepard, played by David Carradine, and Sergeant Powell, played by uh, Richard Roundtree. That's why I said Richard Roundtree earlier. So they're trying to figure out what's going on. And and I will say one little flaw in this movie is that, um, is that uh, there's not really a lot of buildup towards, um, the, you know, Shepard and, and Powell coming to the conclusion about the, you know, the winged serpent flying around, killing people, eating people, things like this. But, uh, you know, they kind of just figure it out right away. So I would say that's probably one little flaw, I would say, in the storytelling technique. Um, but also, too, you have a couple of little subplots going on. It turns out that there's this, the um, the serpent is worshipped by these, like, Aztec people, I believe. And uh, they believe that they have to sacrifice people to it. So, you know, they're, so while they're dealing with these, you know, people turning up being eaten alive and stuff, you know, you also see all these skin bodies and people disemboweled and things like that. And it turns out it's these, you know, Aztec people who worship the, the serpent. And they think that by sacrificing people that, you know, they're sacrificing it to their God, pretty much. Then we're introduced to Michael Moriarty's character, uh, Jimmy Quinn, who's kind of a petty crook. And, and uh, he's trying to get in on a diamond heist. And he, he does, you know, and he's, of course, he's trying to get more money out of these, you know, he's all, I think he said like, you know, uh, he's trying for like 20%. And I think they tell him, no, you're only going to get like, you know, 12% of it. So, you know, basically he has to go in on it. And so they do the, you know, they do the robbery and, you know, it doesn't go well for, you know, Jimmy Quinn, he loses the diamonds and, you know, he's trying to figure out what his next move is going to be. And, um, he goes to the Chrysler building which, you know, that's actually kind of a neat thing about this movie, too, is they, you know, usually whenever you think of monster movies taking place in New York City, you know, whether it's like the Roland Emmerich um, Godzilla or it's like, you know, King Kong or any of those kind of movies, usually they always go for like the Empire State Building. But in this movie, you know, you know, Larry Cohen changes it up a little bit and he goes for the Chrysler Building, which was a nice touch. So he goes to the... Um, he goes to the top of the Chrysler building and he finds a nest where the serpent laid its egg. And so he goes back to his apartment with his girlfriend played by Candy Clark. And so he's, he's all frazzled trying to, you know, tell her about what's going on and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, so eventually he, you know, um, he gets caught by two of the guys that he did the heist with and they're threatening that they're going to kill him and they're going to really mess him up because he lost the diamonds. And then he pretty much lies to them and tells them, you know, they stashed them in the Chrysler building. So he leaves them there, you know, takes them up to the top of the building and, um, you know, you know, they see the nest and everything. Then the serpent appears and kills them and everything. So Jimmy's able to get away. 
So he goes to the cops and, uh, you know, there's some good, you know, one thing I got to say, there's a lot of fun banter between um, Richard Roundtree and David Carradine. Um, Larry Cohn wrote, wrote a lot of fun dialogue in this movie. This is, you know, you do get a good buddy cop kind of thing out of this too as well. So um, Michael Moriarty's character, he goes to, you know, he goes to the cops and, you know, he explains to them about, you know, the serpent and all this stuff. And, you know, the, and it just proves Carradine's, uh, Carradine's um, you know, theory about, you know, the winged serpent and everything else. And he's been looking into it and everything. And David Carradine gets some really weird dialogue in this movie. I'm not kidding. There's a part where he's in, you know, he's in bed with his girlfriend and he says he needs to take his birth control pills. So like, what the hell, man? Is, is there such? Is there something I'm left out on? Is there actually such a thing as male birth control? Maybe there is. I don't know. I mean, usually you think male birth control, you think like either condoms or vasectomy, you know. But anyway, I, I digress. Let's get back to it. So anyway, so Jimmy, you know, he decides that uh, he's he's got the information. He's going to tell him, but he wants to make some demands. And of course, his girlfriend, Candy Clark, she's not very happy about this. And so she leaves him, but he decides he's going to go ahead and, you know, proceed with what he wants to do. So, you know, he goes to the, you know, he goes to the cops and everything else. And he explains that, you know, he'll give the information, but he wants like a million dollars tax free and so on and so on and everything else. So they decide to check up on his, you know, his information and they do find the, um, you know, they do find the, uh, uh, the nest at the top of the Chrysler building. And, you know, and as a matter of fact here, there were Carradine is getting ready to take out the nest, take out the baby serpent. So they do, but unfortunately because they didn't find the, um, because they didn't find the, uh, the mother, uh, serpent and everything. So poor Jimmy, he doesn't get his million dollars and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so, you know, things progress and everything. And then, uh, you know, we get to the climax of the movie where, you know, there's a big fight, you know, monster fighting people and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm trying not to give away too much, you know, for those who haven't seen the movie. And then, uh, you know, also too the, uh, kind of like all the kind of like subplots come together, like the Aztec, you know, people sacrificing people to the, to the serpent, you know, that kind of enters into the Jimmy Quinn story and everything. And, but that's pretty much about all I'm going to tell you about that. Overall, this movie is a lot of fun to watch. It's really a good throwback to monster movies. It has fun with it, but at the same time, it's not its not looking down on it. It's not being condescending to it. It's just, it's just having fun being a good monster movie. And, you know, you get some good dialogue. Like I said, you get some good banter back and forth between um, um, David Carradine and Richard Roundtree's characters. Um, Michael Moriarty is really good in this movie, except there is a part where... I admit I was liking his character a lot, but there is a scene in the movie where he makes racial slurs and I was kind of like, okay, yeah, I don't like this guy anymore. So I didn't care for that. But other than that, um, this movie is a lot of fun. And, but one thing I will say that it's actually kind of interesting approach that Larry Cohen took with this movie that usually, you know, whenever you see these kind of monster movies, giant monsters, you know, flying around, killing people, taking out buildings, things like that. Usually one thing you always get, you always get those scenes of like the scientists in the room, you know, with, you know, the pointer, you know, and all this stuff, you know, like trying to explain everything to the audience, what the monster is, where it came from, you know, how they go about dealing with it. You know, so now the scientists have to work with the military, the military comes in to destroy the monster and all that kind of stuff. You don't get that in this movie, which really surprises me that you don't get that. Um, really it's just mostly, it's just, you know, the New York police trying to take down the monster, you know, and that's about it. There's really no like scientists or no, that's, I mean, there are scenes where Carradine is talking to, you know, um, specialists and things like that, but you know, it's, it's not really like that kind of a, that kind of a monster movie where, you know, you're expecting the, the long drawn out exposition scene. You don't get that. So, so that was a different change of pace, but anyway, yeah, I definitely recommend Q the Winged Serpent. It's a lot of fun. It's, you know, one of Larry Cohen's, you know, may he rest in peace, but it's one of Larry Cohen's most fun and entertaining movies to watch. And, you know, maybe it's not, you know, admittedly some of the special effects, you know, um, 
Some of it's really good, you know. Some of it's just fun. Admittedly, though, some of it doesn't hold up. There are some, you know, parts where like the guy's getting his face skinned and stuff, and you can kind of tell it's like, yeah, it doesn't look all that realistic. Um, some of the stop motion animation is a little wonky in some places, but you know what? Who cares? You know, it's just a fun movie, and it's just you know, have fun watching it. This is what you want. This is something you pop in when you just want a good, fun monster movie, just to you know, shut your brain off and be entertained. And that was one of the great things about Larry Cohen. The guy knew how to make very fun and entertaining movies to watch. So that's pretty much it. So uh, if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different review, one for every day of the week. I'm the Friday reviewer. Um, you know, we got a lot of great guys. Everybody's doing great stuff fun theme weeks and everything else ahead. So, um, you know, yeah. So everybody take care. Have a good night and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.